and it is, it is time to worship. It's been, uh, in some ways, a, a good week, in some ways maybe a, a tough week, and I'm sure that's probably true in everyone's lives because that's, that's kind of how life is, isn't it? But we come and we are reminded that we are not alone, that we have friends to share the journey, and that, that God is with us on the journey. And so this morning, wherever you are on that journey, whether you're on a mountaintop or in a dark valley, know that God is with you that God is here in this place. Let's worship. Good morning. Please join me in the responsive call to worship in your bulletin. Let the Creator be home among us. In our hearts, may God be welcome. May God's love shape our every thought. May our actions lead to God's justice. May our words be words of life. May God's Spirit lead us. May God's peace dwell within us. Amen. Pray with me, please. God, the encourager, God, the compassionate, God, the merciful, holy, blessed, disturb us, rouse us from our sleep, lift us into consciousness of your presence. Change us, move us, mold us for the better, 
so that at the sound of your voice, at the call of our name, we will never be the same. May our worship do this and so much more. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. I invite you to join me in a time of confession, praying together a prayer of confession printed in your order of worship, followed by a time for silence or for silent prayer. Let's pray together. We have not yet learned to love as you love, we have spoken praise in our mouths when our hearts were far from you. The gifts you gave for our peace we have weaponized. Yet, even in our failings, your love has never failed us. Even when we turned you away, you still choose to make your home among us. Our hearts are troubled. 
We are enmeshed in fear. Creation needs you. Our families need you. Our streets need you. Our cities need you. The soil needs you. Our souls need you. Heal us, forgive us, make us whole again. We offer these prayers in the name of our healer, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Beloved of God, hear the good news. God's faithfulness is sure. God's love will not fail us. In accordance with God's loving kindness, you are forgiven, you are welcome, you are home. Amen. Please stand in body or spirit for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel lesson today is from the book of John, chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. After this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool called in Hebrew, Beth Zatha. It has five porticos. In these lay many ill, blind, lame and paralyzed people. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The ill man answered him, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am making my way down, someone else steps ahead of me. Jesus said to him, stand up, take your mat and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was a Sabbath. This is the gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God. Pray with me, please. Oh God, in these precious moments, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Sometimes Jesus did some weird stuff. You may remember one time as he was going along, he encountered a man who had been blind from birth and he spit in the dust, made some mud, put it on the man's eyes, and then told him to go wash it off. Now, other times, he, he just spoke a word of healing, and, and it was done. So what was up with the mud? And then there was a time when he needed to pay the temple tax, and so he sent Peter fishing, not so that he could catch a lot of fish and sell them, and then they would have money to pay the tax. No, he sent Peter fishing and, and told him to, the first fish he caught, that there would be a coin in the fish's mouth, and they could use that to pay the tax. Weird stuff. 
And in our gospel lesson today, Jesus, well, he did something weird. He asked a man who we're told had been sick for 38 years if he wanted to be well. And we're not told directly, but the implication is that the man had an infirmity that left him immobile. Now, imagine being, as we heard, ill for 38 years. 38 years. 38 years ago right now, it was 1984. Ronald Reagan was campaigning for his second term in office. Few people owned a computer. Most of us had never even heard of this thing called the World Wide Web or the Internet. Mobile phones were something either that really wealthy people had or that you just saw on TV. Imagine having been sick that long, 38 years. It's, it's longer than several of you here have been alive. It would seem obvious that a person in that situation would want to be well. And yet, Jesus asked the question. Well, the story goes on, of course, without the man really giving Jesus a direct answer to that question, Jesus nonetheless healed him. But it's the question that keeps echoing in, in my mind. Do you want to be made well? It may seem crazy, but sometimes people don't. I have known people who had chronic illnesses who might have said that they wanted to be well, but their actions told a different story. Perhaps they enjoyed the attention that their infirmity brought them. Perhaps they liked having people feel sorry for them. Maybe they liked having others do things for them. Whatever the case, the fact is some people really wouldn't want to be made well. It's a question worth asking ourselves. You or I may have things about us that immobilize us in some fashion, that, that hold us back, that keep us down? Do we want to be made well? Or would we rather just live with the status quo? Does it seem like it would take too much effort or, or that the risk would be too great? But here's what I want to focus on. I believe that it's a question that also needs to be asked on a larger scale. You see, it isn't only individuals who can need healing. And it isn't only individuals who all too often choose, for various reasons, to maintain the status quo rather than seek that healing. If the status quo benefits some, regardless of how it may disadvantage or even harm others, then quite often they'll seek to keep things as they are. Choosing illness as long as they think that illness for the whole will mean that they get to keep theirs, their position, their power. Their privilege. On May 14th, just over a week ago, 
an 18-year-old young man drove halfway across his home state of New York in order to go to a grocery store in a predominantly black neighborhood. Once there, that young man who is white murdered 10 people, wounded three more. If not for the heroic actions of the store security guard, a retired police officer, there would surely have been additional victims. Most of the victims were black, many of them middle-aged or elderly black women. And the young man apparently had also considered attacking a black church and a predominantly black elementary school in that same area. According to things he wrote online, he based this horrible, horrible act on the belief that Western elites are attempting to replace and disempower white people. It's what's known as the Great Replacement Theory. It's not new. It's been around for a long time. It has been and continues to be used to weaponize fear and anger among some white people about the growing diversity around them. But friends, this, this theory, this illness, is not just some crazy idea held by a few fringe fanatics. According to polling by the Public Religion Research Institute, 50%, fully half, of white evangelicals agree with the statement, immigrants are invading our country and replacing our cultural and ethnic background. Replacement theory. 50% of white evangelicals. Now, that statement specifically names immigrants, but the theory includes immigrants, non-whites, and Jewish people also, by the way. Folks, this, this illness is in and in too many cases is being spread by the church. As a whole, not looking at specific congregations or specific denominations, but as a whole, the church in this country is sick. Replacement theory promotes just us. Jesus commanded and promoted justice for everyone. Replacement theory denies what we call the imago dei, the divine image. But scripture supports and declares that we all, regardless of the color of our skin or our ethnicity, we all bear the divine image. The church is sick. I would point out that if you have a stomach virus, as I did last Monday, it may seem to be just affecting one part of your body, but that doesn't mean that just that part of your body is sick. You're sick. We are sick. The question is, do we want to be well? Well, 
James Baldwin said, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. Are we willing to face it? If we do face it, if we do want to be well, we must know that it won't be easy. Again, it's hard to impose healing, which necessitates change on a person or on an institution that is comfortable with the way things are, even prefers the way things are. And it means overcoming something that has been around, albeit in different versions, for a very long time. It's entrenched. I remember in elementary school being taught a little bit about manifest destiny. This idea that, that this country was destined to reach from the Atlantic to the Pacific. Of course, it wasn't pointed out to me at the time that that necessitated basically the genocide of indigenous people. And of course, Jim Crow laws of a century ago. In the 1970s, we had Richard Nixon's Southern Strategy. And in 2017, the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, where white supremacists chanted, you will not replace us. Getting well won't be easy. And it won't be painless. But if we really want to follow Jesus then that's the path that we must travel. Now, I know it is so, so tempting to let ourselves off the hook. I don't believe in that theory. Our church doesn't teach that kind of thinking. What difference can I make? We try to let ourselves off the hook. But friends, we mustn't sit this one out. We've heard the quote that the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is that good people do nothing. Do we want to be well? Do we want the church in this country to be well? We cannot do nothing. In his letter from the Birmingham jail, Martin Luther King Jr. wrote, we will have to repent in this generation, not merely for the hateful words and actions of the bad people, but for the appalling silence of the good people. Do we want to be well? We want the church in this country to be well. We cannot be silent. We must speak out against this great replacement theory, and we must speak up for something better, for the abundant life, for the beloved community that Jesus came to establish and to offer to all people. Or someone has put it, denounce the great replacement theory and instead live out the great commandment. Love one another. But it comes down to answering the question, not just with our words, but with our very lives. Do we want to be well? Do we? Amen.
Please stand in body or spirit and join in the affirmation of faith. We believe in God, creator of all things, heavenly Father and Mother, soul of infinite love, wisdom and power, ruler of all that is and all that is to come, who is mystery yet revealed. We follow Christ, God's chosen one, who loved and served humbly, who healed the broken and included the outcast, who chose to suffer rather than harm for the sake of the healing of all creation, who gave his life for our redemption and who was raised by God to new life. In Christ's teaching, Christ's death and resurrection, in Christ's presence with us in all circumstances, Christ reveals God to us. Christ calls us to serve for the sake of God's grace, we trust that Christ accompanies us and will help, guide, heal, and defend us through all difficulty and suffering. We believe the Holy Spirit sustains us and guides us and empowers us as servants of God's grace. We live as the body of Christ in the power of forgiveness and the reality of resurrection and in the light of eternal life. Amen. Whatever is of concern to you in these moments, whatever is weighing on your mind, whatever is troubling your heart, I invite you and encourage you to offer up your prayers to God, even as I lead us in this time of prayer. And then I would invite you ask you to join me in offering together the prayer of our Savior. Let's pray. Holy One, with all of the things going on in the world that trouble us and that burden us. Sometimes we forget to simply look around us. The rains have given a lushness to the landscape that is breathtakingly beautiful if we will but see it. We may be getting later into the springtime but still there are blossoms to be enjoyed, fragrances to take in, beauty in which to bathe. Give us eyes and hearts that are open to that beauty. For we need it to sustain us. God, we do acknowledge all of the hurt and pain in our world. from the continued warring madness in Ukraine to families who are dealing with disease and difficult diagnoses. We pray for peace among nations, but also within relationships and within persons. 
God, we pray for an end to the violence that plagues us, an end to the idolatry of firearms, We pray that all of us who claim the name of Christ, that all of us who gather as churches across this land, would recognize that that God and country are not on the same level while we may love the place of our birth and we may may love our homeland yet you are God and you alone are worthy of our worship God, we see so much in our world, so much in our lives, so much in our land, and so much in the church itself that need healing. And so we pray for strength, for guidance, but perhaps most of all, God, we pray for courage to be who you have called and who you empower us to be. Give us the courage to speak out against injustice, to speak out against theories that that name some people as being less than others. Give us courage, O Lord, to be the church, to be who you designed us to be, who you dreamed for us to be, who you created us to be. May we follow as you lead. Hear us now as we join our hearts as well as our voices, praying as Christ has taught us. O God, our Mother, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God has created a world of great diversity, full of wonder and potential. We honor God's gifts to us in Christ and in each other as we choose to give in support of God's purposes in the world. For all who wish to respond to God's generosity with their own, after the service you may leave your gifts in the offering plates that are available to the entrances to the sanctuary, or you are welcome to give electronically through Venmo. May these gifts be used to bring life and love and liberation for this world that God so dearly loves.
once again in the news this week was the story of a part of the church sending a message to one of our political office holders in Washington that they would not be welcome to receive communion in their home church because of a position that that person holds politically. I've said it lots of times before, but I will say it again. This is God's table. The night before he was arrested and then crucified, when Jesus sat at the table, he not only sat at the table with, but he washed the feet of and he shared the bread and the cup with those who would desert him, the one who would deny him, and with the one who be would betray him. He didn't turn anyone away. I am not, and I strongly believe that no clergy person is to serve as a gatekeeper at the table of the Lord. No matter who you are or where you are on your life's journey, you are welcome here. That's, that's a message I don't believe just of our denomination. I believe that is the message of God. So, friends, know that this is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love God and who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who've been here often and you who've not been here for a long time, you who have tried to follow, and you who have failed. Come not because I invited you. The invitation comes from God. It is God's will and God's joy that those who seek Christ should meet Christ here. On the night when Jesus was betrayed. He sat at supper with his disciples. And while they were eating supper, he took a piece of bread and he said a blessing, broke it, and gave it to them with these words. And later, he took the cup, saying, And so now, following Jesus' example and command, we take this bread and this cup, the ordinary things of the world which Christ makes holy. I invite you to come.
Friends, I invite you, in body or in spirit, to rise and join in our prayer of thanksgiving. Through this space and time together today, we celebrate the covenant that ties us with God, Jesus the Christ, our neighbors, and creation. Thank you, divine crafter of the table, for fashioning us a holy meal, uniting us with the body of Christ. Send us into the world resurrected, refreshed, and ready to share Christ's unconditional love. Amen. You may be seated. I would encourage you to take note of announcements in the bulletin today. I don't think there's anything new this week, but I would just call your attention to those and just ask you to continue to be in prayer for, for those around you, for your community, for our world, and for all who, who are hurting in these days for whatever reason. Remember that they may not come to you telling you they want to be well. But Jesus healed that man without him really expressly telling him that he, he wanted him to make him well. And so let's be those agents of healing as we go. I invite you again in body or in spirit to stand with us as we sing our closing hymn. Friends, our time of worship here in, within these sacred walls may have come to an end. But the work of our worship continues as we go out those doors. Go and do the work of love and justice. Go and do your part. Let us do our part. to be made well, 
that our country, that the church would be made well, and that all would experience the abundant life and live in the beloved community. Friends, go and be the church. In the name of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen.